Hey, it's Tim here. It's 2024 and 24.1 is round the corner. I think there's a bit of an elephant in the room that we need to discuss, but as ever, let's get stuck in. Okay, so I'm here in 24.1. Actually, I'm here in my recording screen, but nonetheless, um, we're here on the Tableau coming soon page. This is pretty much the hint that the next release of Tableau is just around the corner. And so it's always a good thing to come to this page. And I like to just do a video and go through this. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I make videos about Tableau and other tools as well. So uh, let's have a look at what's in this particular release. Let's find out more about what Tableau has in plan. Now, at the very beginning, I talked about an elephant in the room. And I think I'll just come out of the gate with it and just say, look, this looks like the release for Tableau. Low pulse. If you go to the coming soon page and you just scroll down, the first, I'm going to say, four rows are just Tableau Pulse. So to set some expectations, um, because this is a Tableau Pulse release and Tableau Pulse has many features in it, uh, the bulk load of these features will be Tableau Pulse. The elephant in the room is that Last year, Tableau changed the cadence of its releases to align with Salesforce. So Salesforce has three releases a year, pretty much to align with the seasons. And by doing that, what that has meant is that the cadence of when we expect features has changed. And what that has sort of done is it's moved things kind of out of place. And so I had assumed last year when the beta for Tableau Pulse came out, that that was the Tableau Pulse release. But it looks like this is the release where it comes out of beta and it's going to be available to everyone. The elephant in the room, though, is that because it's a Tableau Pulse release, it's basically got nothing else in this particular release. And that's a bit of an unfair statement. There are other features in here, but I think it's fair to say if I was to just go to this page and go to the products drop down and choose Tableau Desktop, there's only two features and they're not necessarily analytical features. And so I think it is fair to say that Tableau Pass has taken a large uh, bulk of this release. For more desktop and you know analytical related features, we might have to wait until the next release. But I'm also pretty excited about the things I think will come out this year. So I'm not too worried about that. I think it makes sense if Tableau Pulse comes out at the beginning of this year. I really hope and expect that the next two releases, the only two releases for this year, will be big blockbuster releases with things that we've been asking for. There's already lots of hints on social media about what that will be. I think chart types are going to be a big thing in that. We're also potentially going to get desktop related features for AI. So something like Tableau Copilot, which you know has been demoed at Keynote. Uh, would be something that we'd expect to hopefully see this year alongside all of these other amazing AI features. So that's enough context for this release. That's the elephant in the room discussed. Let's go ahead and select all products and let's just go down this list in chronological order like I like to do. So let's do it. So we've got Tableau Pulse. Um, you know, this is just Tableau saying, hey, this is now out of beta. This is in production. I'm surprised. I thought this would come out in um, around about April, actually just after conference. I, after my one hour video where I went through it for the first time, there was a few bugs in there that I think maybe they're pushing to fix right now. Maybe they've known about them and they have fixes for them. But in my eyes, I think there were just a few things about the UX and the experience that were missing a little bit. And I think to release those products without those questions answered in a more coherent way, potentially causes a risk in two ways. Tableau often suffers from this problem where it releases a feature really quickly and the feature changes really quickly. And what that does is it creates a challenge for people who have to communicate the features within an enterprise context. It then makes it hard to adopt those things because those features don't stand still and you kind of need them to be out for a while to really know how best to use them. So by default, organizations don't use them and when they don't use them, Tableau doesn't get the feedback it needs about them. And then a year down the line, this whole big thing comes out and you know Tableau end up having to pivot really hard because they didn't get the feedback they needed earlier on. So the beta is supposed to help with that, but in earnest, the catch here is that most people who have Tableau Pulse are on Tableau Cloud. In fact, Tableau Pulse only works on Tableau Cloud. And so you're already sort of narrowing down your user base because a lot of large enterprises, some of them actually prefer the Tableau server experience. I can't talk percentages, but I'm fairly confident to say there's a large body of Tableau users who are still going to be using Tableau Server who won't have had any interaction with Tableau Pulse at all. They'll only get that experience when they move to the cloud. And judging by what Tableau is saying, it will never come to Tableau Server. So to not have anything else for those people, I think, is going to cause a challenge. And for the people who do have it, you won't have a critical enough user base giving uh, insights and feedback onto that. Anyway, I think I've labored that point too much. The other thing to bear in mind is the way they've sort of grouped Tableau Pulse, 
in my mind, Tableau Pulse is the feature. But if you look at this page, they've gone Tableau Pulse, Tableau Pulse on mobile, Tableau Pulse next gen experiences. And if you click on that and you look at you know what that's talking about, it's essentially just the integration of Tableau Pulse into the rest of the platform. And they've kind of chopped it up into sort of smaller bits. These small bits are features, yes, but in my mind, they only exist because Ask Data and um, the previous one, there was Ask Data and there was um, uh, not Ask Data, I forget the other one, Metrics. Ask Data and Metrics were pulled from the platform. So these just replace those uh, with a Tableau Pulse sort of front end. It's sort of like a rebrand slash redo of some of those features. So I do think it's, again, a bit misleading to say that all of this was there because Yes, probably in the back end, it's a complete rebuild and rethink of how it works with Gen AI built in. But in all honesty, again, it's really hard to sort of clarify, you know, why isn't this just Tableau Pulse, right? Um, it's really hard to break down the features. So product marketing can answer that. I'm not, I'm not a product marketing specialist. But if we go through these features very quickly, I'll, I'll do a separate video on Tableau Pulse once it's out in public. I don't like to do videos on betas because, yeah, things are still getting fixed. And um, I think it's fair to give uh, you know, the companies building these things a chance. So... Uh, gen, uh, next gen experiences, this is essentially the interface with Slack and the interface with Tableau Mobile. Um, if I go to the next one, Tableau Pulse uh, GAI. So um, this is essentially the, uh, this is sort of uh, the AI capabilities. I always get frustrated with them because there's a lot of terminology. And to be honest, we've really not had a chance to sort of embed ourselves in them. So I'm going to read this paragraph and I'm going to try and break it down just to give you an example. So Tableau Pulse is powered by Tableau AI, okay? So, all right, Tableau AI is a new feature. That's really not called out here, but we will sort of come back to it. Now, <clears throat> you're probably wondering, well, what does the G in GAI mean? Let's keep reading this to find out. Um, a suite of predictive and generative AI capabilities that simplify and democratize insight consumption and data analytics at scale. So... Tableau Pulse GAI is just Tableau Pulse Generative AI, okay? The first feature of Generative AI in Tableau Pulse is Insight Summary. So Tableau Pulse GAI is like the headline feature. Tableau AI is the parent feature of Tableau GAI. And within Tableau GAI, uh, Pulse Insight Summaries are a sub-feature of Tableau GAI, which is a sub-feature of Tableau AI. You see what I mean? Like it gets really complex. I'm 90% I'm sure that's exactly what it means, but uh, this stuff is not easy to comprehend and it just feels like AI is being thrown everywhere to make the product look more exciting. But there is a little bit of a hierarchy in structure. And I think sometimes products just need to sort of get real with people and just simplify the naming a lot more than it currently is. Um, let's keep on reading. This is where the large language model LLM provides an overview of the metrics that matter to you in plain language. So it's basically giving a summary of what's going on. Tableau AI, the high level thing, is built on the Einstein trust layer, meaning it enables trusted, ethical, and open AI powered experiences without compromised data security and privacy. The Einstein trust layer is in itself a separate technology, I think generally in the Salesforce platform. I'd almost sort of refer to it as a principle within the uh, Salesforce platform. Now, the thing about it is it runs in Tableau Cloud. So I think they can call it the one thing because it's all run from a central place, if that makes sense. So that's just me describing and sort of breaking down the AI specific terms in this and why all these features can kind of feel like they're repetitive, but there's actually subtle differences about them. So we've just talked about the insights, uh, you know, summaries. Now we have the Tableau Pulse Insights platform. That's essentially this sort of interface that gives you information about um, the metrics that you're creating. Um, if you watch my video on Tableau Pulse, I do break down this sort of methodology that they go through of creating metrics definitions and then from that creating your metrics. I think it's actually quite a useful way of thinking about it. Even if you're not going to use Tableau Pulse, it's a good way to think about your own dashboards and analytics to really drive home what it is people are trying to answer and the questions people are trying to answer. So this is pretty cool. So knowing where, when and why to pay attention to your business has never been easier. With Tableau Pulse, the Insights platform automatically detects drivers, trends, contributors, and outliers from the metrics you follow. It proactively flags 
changes the matter to you. It proactively flags changes that matter to you. God, I didn't read that right. <laughs> Using natural language and supporting visual explanations, users can receive proactive guided questions to progressively reveal business insights via conversational interface. I'll put up a video of me doing that. I actually just kept on uh, tapping the text in this particular instance to kind of get these loaded up. And it was actually quite good. And um, I, was, I was quite fond of it. This experience has previously uh, been possible in something called Alteryx Auto Insights. But again, who's heard of Alteryx and who is using Alteryx Insights? Good question. Exactly. So uh, Tableau will be perceived to be the you know the team that's uh, bringing this to the mainstream. But um, you know it's not an entirely original thought. Some of this has appeared in other bits of products. Power BI users always tell me in the comments, "Hey, this has been in Power BI for years." Um, so yeah, there you go. I can't I can't come back to those comments because I don't use Power BI. So power to you. Um, let's go back to uh, this list. So Tableau Pulse Metrics layer. This to me is just the metrics capabilities, but redefine so the interface and the capability to define your metrics, create those metrics, then instantiate those, um, you know, around the platform. So it starts with a metric definition, and then from there you can create multiple metrics that feed from that metric definition. The powerful thing is you choose the dimensions and the elements that can cut your data, and then from there. The rest is all up to the user and how they interact and how they make cuts. So that's a pretty powerful feature. Tableau Pulse recommended metrics. So um, this is actually quite interesting. So uh, derive actionable pulse metrics from Tableau dashboard visualizations. Utilizing the Tableau data guide feature, you can select a visualization within a dashboard to receive tailored recommendations for potential pulse metrics. So this is quite nice. I hadn't actually played and noticed this before in my uh, little demo. So um, it gives you this uh, area on the right hand side. You can just see here, uh, there's a little uh, option in data guide that then pulls out metrics from these dashboards. So it seems like there's a way to use the data sources uh, from dashboards to drive Tableau Pulse. And that's sort of a nice thing. Again, this is a replacement of metrics that was previously there this time with Tableau Pulse sort of layered on top. So let's go ahead to the next one. Uh, Tableau Pulse in Slack makes a lot of sense. Uh, Tableau Pulse Email Digest. I've been getting these, I really enjoy them. I don't have anything exciting in my data there, so they look boring. But I imagine if you're connecting these to real data sets, I think this would be a really powerful feature. I think a lot of people are gonna love this once they build their metrics. Um, Tableau Pulse Metrics Search. This is also quite good. I showed this in my video. I think it's a shame that the search is not part of the Omni Search experience across the whole entire Tableau Cloud platform. But nonetheless, I think this is gonna be um, a pretty nice uh, addition. What I hope is it also starts to nudge metrics at things you should be aware of. So if that's something that even Tableau Server and Tableau Cloud are capable of doing, let's hope it comes to Tableau Pulse soon. Uh, Tableau Pulse web component. So you can take Tableau Pulse out and embed it in other places. So this is an embedded in, uh, example, and it makes sense that Pulse gets an embedded story to go with it. And yeah, you can just go ahead and take Pulse metrics and put them inside of your application. And you can, I think it looks like here, you can embed the whole entire metric and the whole right-hand side is just generated for you uh, by um, Tableau, which is pretty fantastic, I think. There's a Lightning Web component for putting Tableau Pulse into Salesforce. That makes a lot of sense. Um, you'd expect that given Tableau is a Salesforce company, so no surprises there. And then we get to the rest of the features. So that's sort of the full range of Tableau Pulse features. The next features are sort of just native features. So Tableau Cloud on AWS Marketplace. So you can essentially go to the AWS Marketplace and set up a Tableau Cloud. So you get a simplified billing experience, streamlined procurement, and a single view of IT spending. Uh, why would you do this rather than just going to Tableau directly? Well, some companies enter into extremely large contracts with AWS and they have what are called AWS credits they can actually use those credits towards Tableau Cloud, which means they're, you know, their essential sort of bill for AWS comes under one roof. And because they're thinking about the cloud, they can actually just conceptualize everything around the cloud in one place, rather than having all these separate relationships. So that's quite of a nice feature, especially I think for small organizations who are just getting started really quickly and need to stand up something quick, not really gonna need to negotiate terms with Tableau and they can just go to a web page, stand something up quickly, run a trial for a couple of weeks or a month and see how it goes and then kill it as soon as it's done. That's sort of the kind of experience you want uh, to be able to stand up project quickly. And then over time, you can kind of figure out how you transition from let's say one cloud to another, but that's uh, essentially the spirit. Um, migration SDK, so this is actually pretty important. Um, we talked about Tableau Server at the beginning of this video. If you're gonna be moving from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud because you really want Pulse, maybe, um, you're gonna need this because 
at the moment, migrating from server to cloud or cloud to cloud um, is actually pretty hard. And lots of companies are trying to make tools behind the scenes to make this easier to do. But there's also just a few challenges in terms of feature parity. So what Tableau are doing here is they've uh, created a software development kit. That's what SDK stands for. And it allows companies and you know users to build uh, applications that do this moving for you in a more automated way. So let's say you've got a workbook and you want to move not just the workbook, but all the associated users. And SDK would give you access to all the relevant tools like creating permissions, moving and publishing everything, moving data sources. That's what an SDK would let you do. So think of it like an API, but it's for applications to use to actually control Tableau and move things across. So that's pretty handy. Um, increased data storage um, makes sense of your data in Tableau Cloud with expanded storage. Now every site on Tableau Cloud gets one terabyte of data storage. Enterprise SKU and advanced management customers get five terabytes of data storage per site. So these are for Tableau Cloud customers who are, <laughs> are running what I would consider extremely, extremely large extracts or are running very, very large sort of capacities. Now, the reason you probably do this is because your top sort of tier of customers are now sort of in that one terabyte scale. So essentially they've bumped up all the storage limits because you know people's cloud instances are just getting bigger and bigger. And so that makes a lot of sense. What I will say though, is that a lot of Tableau clouds and Tableau servers just have a lot of junk on them. So I think there's a lot of value to be said here. How about cleaning up your environment and getting into a healthy sort of state of hygiene uh, to avoid hitting these limits rather than just buying on more storage and letting the problem grow. So that could be another approach to, to, to that. Tableau with MFA authentication enhancements. So uh, protect Tableau with multi-factor authentication users from lockouts. Recovery code setup in is now required when using a single multi-factor authentication verifier. Okay, so new configuration actions and error messages enable admins to better help users regain access. So this is essentially Salesforce implemented the multi-factor authentication mechanism. Now, if you only have one MFA, then you're required to uh, set up um, a protection basically to stop you from getting locked out. Because if you lose access to the multi-factor authentication, there is no way to really get it back other than probably resetting the account wholesale. So to avoid this, they're suggesting people create two. So if one doesn't work, you've got another fallback or having another way of basically unlocking yourself. So that's pretty handy. Generic OpenID Connect protocol support for Tableau Cloud. Um, yeah, this is just uh, OpenID support, I think, for Tableau Cloud. So use the identity provider of your choice on Tableau Cloud. OpenID, I think, is actually a, um, a standard. I don't think it's one specific thing. A good example is OpenID would let you, for example, use uh, Google as an example login, or I think Facebook, I think, also supports OpenID. Um, but there are other, you know, uh, authentication mechanisms and they're worth sort of considering. But OpenID is, I think, a pretty big standard and you can get a lot of connectors for it. So yeah, authentication configuration enhancements. So prevent account lockouts with improved authentication configuration. Improvements include UI changes, field level validation, actionable messages, and improved inline warnings. So quite a few changes here. It feels like part of a big authentication push for Tableau Cloud. Um, this release is not a Tableau server release. There will only be one more Tableau server release this year um, because of the change last year on releases. So every other release will be a Tableau Server release, which means uh, we won't get a release for Tableau Server uh, in this release. The next one will be 24.2, and then we won't get the next one until 25.1. So 24.2 will be the next server release, and 25.1 will be the one after. And in 25. Uh, sorry, in 24.2, we should get some of these cloud features available in the server release. So that's how that works. Um, <clears throat> Identify duplicate rows. Um, let's have a look at this. Da, 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 da. Oh, no, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, consume native Salesforce data cloud objects to Tableau catalog. So this is essentially objects inside of, um, oh, this is interesting. So consume native Salesforce data cloud objects in Tableau catalog. That's a bit of a tongue twister. I don't think I know what native Salesforce data cloud objects are. If you know, let me know in the comments, but let's read this description. Make better informed decisions using data cloud objects. Access to Salesforce data cloud objects, data lake objects, data model objects, <laughs> calculated insights, and now distinct entities native to Tableau catalog. So I think this is just exposing more of the guts of Salesforce to the Tableau catalog. 
so that in the catalog, you can actually see these working. It's not that they weren't available in Tableau already. I think people could already use these inside of, um, you know, uh, their data sources. But I think specifically here, you're able to see the actual object as it comes from Salesforce rather than just seeing a data source connection or a name there. So that's that's pretty handy. Um, let's go back to the next one. Labels in web authoring and custom label management improvements. So they've added um, more capabilities to add labels. These were uh, released in the previous release. I've already made a video about those. Check them out. But the nice thing here is it's now part of web authoring. So that's a pretty sort of nice enhancement. Uh, it's good to know there. Um, identify duplicate rows. This is in Tableau Prep. Uh, trust your data is clean and accurate with enhanced Tableau Prep functionality to identify duplicate records across your data set. With the visual and direct nature of Tableau Prep, it is now easy to understand the reason behind the duplicate records. Users can fix the identified data issues or remove all the duplicates based on specific data prep needs. Prep just keeps knocking these out. I know, I'm, I think I'm just becoming a Prep fanboy. If there's any t-shirts for Tableau Prep, send them my way because I just love this part of Tableau. I don't know, it's because really I just enjoy doing data prep and I enjoy doing it in tools that make it easy. But I just think, again, we're getting features that we've been asking for. And every time a feature comes out, I just feel like new doors are opened in Tableau Prep. I, I, I love it. So um, I'll stop being a fan of Tableau Prep. Maybe I'll make some merch and it will all be about Tableau Prep. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested. Um, Splunk JDBC Connector um, enhance your liability to harness your ability to harness valuable insights from your Splunk data experience, improved integration to Splunk Enterprise with Tableau's Splunk Connector. So what this is, Splunk is a tool that essentially is really good at getting logs from systems. The idea here is that you can now connect all of those logs and all of this data to uh, Tableau. So you can visualize it and work with it easily. Previously, you had to do a lot of, I think, parsing and scraping to get this to work. Um, but to have a native connector via JDBC is um, quite good. I never understand what JDBC I always forget, sorry. Um, I know ODBC is Open Database Connection. I think JDBC might be Java Database Connection, but I'm not 100% sure. So um, let me know if you know. Select header and start row in Tableau Prep. Oh, that's beautiful. That's just that's just a, like really good. Again, another nice small feature. These are like just tiny enhancements, but just bringing Tableau Prep closer and closer to being something that I'd want to start using right out of the gate instead of something like Alteryx. So um, yeah, super interesting. Um, I love it. This is pretty much as, as it says on the tin, you can choose uh, the header and start row. Now, the thing about this is that I'm not sure it's possible with Excel. I think it might only be for CSV. Oh no. Users gain control over the Excel data. It is possible with Excel, uh, but the example has a CSV. So I think what had happened previously is that it was possible in CSVs, but it wasn't possible in Excel. And this is the Excel enhancement. So um, the screenshot here, though, is a CSV, which is why I was slightly confused. Um, but anyway, nonetheless, pretty good, pretty good. Um, virtual connection support using Google service accounts. This is probably one of those enterprise things where if you're using a Google service account, um, virtual connections were pretty annoying. Now they're supported. You can just go ahead and do that. So that's nice. Viz navigation text table and uh, Viz navigation for text table. That's interesting. Navigate text table seamlessly using only a keyboard. Okay. Accessibility feature. Viz navigation for text tables enables customers using assistive technology to navigate through headers, access, and visualization pane in all the ways they would be able to using a mouse. This is a great feature. I'm going to be doing a video on accessibility very soon with a chap called Ron in the community. He's a great ambassador on this and um, knows a lot more about accessibility than I do. Uh, and we've been working a little bit with Tableau to sort of understand some of these capabilities. So I'm looking forward to doing that video. Check out that soon when it drops. Um, visual segment creation to Salesforce data cloud. So create segments in data cloud directly from your visual data exploration within Tableau. Um, Visual Segment Creation Salesforce Data Cloud provides you with a streamlined way to explore the data from your data model objects, DMOs, identify candidate audience segments, and push these audience segments directly in Data Cloud from your web authoring session. Okay, so we're thinking about web edit, we're pushing things to Data Cloud, and it's just a little bit more integration between Salesforce and um, Tableau itself. Dynamic parameters in table extensions. Oh, that's very nice. Table extensions are quite powerful. Dynamic parameters in table extensions. Oh, unlock live data. Um, table extensions unlock live data, enhance security and transform analytics through automatic retrieval based on user parameters. 
seamlessly connect Tableau dashboards to external services, passing parameters securely to unlock the full potential of your data. So what that is, is a huge change. I mean, this is one of those things where it's hard to know what it is, but let me, let me explain. Table extensions allow you to call third-party services, sometimes an API using Python or R, and in doing so, what it essentially you can do is you can pass it dynamic parameters. So what this is, is potentially the capability of having a visualization uh, pass a parameter action to a parameter, which in then turns, which in turn then changes the table extension query that runs on the data, which then changes what's going on. So that actually makes dashboards that are calling APIs a little bit more sort of living and, and live because you can actually be running these things in the background doing really powerful automations um, nicely. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, email customization. Um, oh, wow, you can actually use your own SMTP server rather than the Tableau email server. That's incredible. That's I mean, some big companies will love that. Assuming this is for Tableau Cloud, right? So subscription and alert emails, of course it has. And um, there's no server release. This has to be Tableau Cloud. And um, that's actually always worth noting if I'm reading this and you're thinking, oh, for Tableau server, no, there's no server release. So this has to be Tableau Cloud. Um, Subscription and alert emails along with the include URL links can now be configured to be sent from your company email domain. That's huge for some companies because they really want to be in control of everything and getting that email from Tableau. Sometimes it goes into the spam filter, especially in very sort of secure setups. So yeah, being able to customize that, huge win. Consume embedded API via uh, NPM node package manager. So the embedded API is now available as a node package um, in the API v3. Uh, I think this was previously um, available. I don't know if I'd seen that before and it's just come out again. But anyway, SCIM compatibility with grant license on sign-in. So sign tablet cloud license on an as-needed basis. Okay, that's quite cool. SCIM is now compatible with grant license on sign-in. GLSI for Azure AD and Okta IDP. So those are two authentication identity sort of systems that now support this. I don't know what SCIM means. So uh, assign classes on as needed basis. SCIM compatibility with grant license. I have no clue. I have no clue. I'll find out and I'll let you know in the comments that's beaten me already. Um, reduced idle time session out. So enjoy great tablet cloud performance. We've lowered the idle session timeout for VizQL sessions from 200 minutes to 30 minutes to boost scalability. Okay. <coughs> so <laughs> that's not sold like a feature, but it's more of a change, right? Enjoy greater tablet cloud performance. We've lowered the idle session timeout for VizQL. So basically what they're saying is VizQL will be faster because we've lowered everyone's idle time so that they're not hanging around for 200 minutes. It's only going to be keeping sessions live for 30 minutes. Could get annoying if you step away from your screen, go to a meeting, come back, and you have to do the whole rigmarole of getting everything loaded up again. I think 200 minutes wasn't bad. So um, yeah, let's find out. Let's find out if people complain about that. Extract settings, uh, UI enhancements. So uh, manage incremental refreshes in an improved extract setting UI. Then new settings layout makes discovery and navigation easier. Enhanced dialogue gives admins better visibility and deeper insights. So um, let's have a look at this little demo. So you can click edit and oh yeah, there's a little bit more of an interface on the extract interface. I think this is also gonna apply for desktop. So um, you can see this looks like a desktop uh, view. Um, it's not blue across the top, so it looks like a desktop view, but they've changed that extract interface because they're probably bringing Tableau desktop to the web a bit more than they have done. So um, yeah, that's a nice small change. And the very last one is view acceleration REST API. Manage view acceleration with a REST API call. Um, now you can turn view acceleration on and off set data refreshness policies and get acceleration status updates with the API. So this is handy because you can essentially run some sort of script or logic to say, hey, which visualizations are getting absolutely hammered? And then you could use this API to go and selectively turn this feature on on behalf of them so that the people who are using a dashboard the most often are getting the best experience. And that in turn can actually make your platform run better because view acceleration is kind of pre-cooking up the data sources. So as many people hit the cache, rather than loading the data raw from the database every time.
So there we have it, 30 minutes. We've gone through all of 24.1. Uh, as soon as this launches, this is just a Tableau Pulse release, really. So um, we'll get onto that. And if you haven't noticed, I've just not had time to make videos recently. So I am so behind. I've still not finished 23.3 videos. It's actually crazy. I'm working through 24.1 uh, sort of content. It's going to be mostly about Tableau Pulse. I'd kind of imagined that 24.1 was going to have something about Tableau Pulse after sort of a few a few hints uh, uh, from 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 the Tableau themselves. So um, yeah, 24.1 will be a Pulse release. I'll try as much as possible to not just talk about Tableau Pulse because I appreciate not everyone has it, and a lot of people in my audience probably will never use Tableau Pulse out of the gate because they might not have Tableau Cloud. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Also, fun fact. We're super close to 100,000 subscribers. If you want to help me out, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.